Hello everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Previously, it was discovered that the body is one Jill Crane, the very same woman who had something of Kay's. And indeed, it seems to be the promise journal that a young Kay made in her childhood. And it went missing from police evidence years ago. So how did this Jill, who is a member of the PIC, get this notebook? And what was her deal with Kay? And also, of course, yes, Sebastian and uh, Justine Courtney have shown up, and they are accusing Kay of being the murderer. As if things weren't bad enough for her, she's just recovering from falling off a building. Uh, it's not all bad, though. Franziska von Karma herself has arrived on the scene. And, um, uh, she's her same old self, but... She seems to be on our side because she is having a lot of fun whipping Sebastian into shape. <laughs> uh, let's continue. The relationship... <clears throat> oh, sorry. The relationship between Kay Faraday and Mrs. Crane is documented in the letter. She roped Miss Crane into assisting her with the plan. However, for some reason, their partnership broke down. Miss Crane was murdered, but with her dying breath, she managed to retaliate. Her parting gift is this letter, which she tucked safely away in her left breast pocket. How is that possible? Her left breast pocket is riddled with holes. Her, her testimony is even better than ever. Maybe the most perfect it's ever been, sir. Are you going to be all right, Mr. Edgeworth? Um, yes, of course. How unsightly, Miles Edgeworth. Save your stoic act for some other time. Miss Von Karma, just whose side are you on? I'm on nobody's side, Scruffy. When searching for the truth, it's best not to take sides. Watch what you say, Miss Von Karma, or else Mr. DeBest is gonna... Best, you say? Well, I can tell you that the... The side I'm on is always the biag. <laughs> How irritating. Well, I suppose that's one thing we can agree on. <laughs> Time for rebuttal. So let's press everything just in case. The relationship between Kay Faraday and Miss Crane is as documented in the letter. And just what kind of relationship did Kay have with the victim? In the letter, she wrote, Thank you so much for helping with my plan. Their relationship should be quite obvious, that's right. She roped Miss Crane into assisting her with her plan. I would like to hear about Kay's alleged plan in more detail. Just as she wrote in the letter, she wanted to steal something. What's more, the sender of the letter is Kay Faraday, so it's obvious who the main culprit is. Objection! That letter could have easily been forged. It doesn't prove that she planned to steal anything. If memory serves me right, wasn't she a great thief? Th that's... She's, um... Taking a break at the moment. I doubt there is any thief who would inform a prosecutor about their upcoming crimes. Perhaps she simply returned to her trade without you knowing. I suppose I have no means of denying that possibility. Kay Faraday planned the theft and Miss Crane got caught up in it. However, for some reason, their partnership broke down. For some reason, you say. It seems your explanation isn't very clear. I'm sure the reason will become clear upon further investigation. But more importantly, there is no evidence to prove that Kay Faraday did not commit this crime. While there is some evidence to suggest that she committed a crime, none of it can truly be called decisive evidence. What about the letter that shows their complicity and the scene of the crime? 
I think it's fair to say we cannot decisively rule out the possibility that she committed the crime. Miss Crane was murdered, but with her dying breath, she managed to retaliate. Hold it. Do you have any evidence to prove that Kay was the murderer? Haven't you been listening? We've been saying that this letter is the evidence. Oh? And where in the letter does it say that she planned to murder the victim? Uh huh? Uh, um, well, that's... I've got it. It's a hidden message written in invisible ink that can only be read by heating it up. Sebastian, I wouldn't get your hopes up for something like that. There is, of course, evidence that points to her as the criminal. Her parting gift is this letter, which she tucked safely away in her left breast pocket. We searched the victim's left breast pocket as well, but... You found nothing, I presume? Naturally, the officer who found the letter immediately brought it to the best man on the scene. The letter was safely tucked away in her left breast pocket, right above her heart. I believe this letter carries Miss Crane's will for the criminal to be arrested. I have no interest in your beliefs. What I'm interested in is the truth. You said that the letter was in the left breast pocket of the victim, correct? I swear by the goddess of law, there are no lies or mistakes in my statement. The letter was indeed discovered inside the victim's left breast pocket. The victim had been stabbed in the left chest area where the letter was hidden. This may very well be an important clue. I don't think that Kay wrote the letter. But unless I can draw out more information here, that thought means nothing. I should start by pressing her for more details. The relationship between Kay Faraday and Miss Crane is as documented in the letter. Oh, it looped, right. Let's point out the stab wounds. If she was stabbed in the left chest, uh, chest by like a three-part pronged weapon, how in the hell did the letter get uh, remain intact? Objection! I'm glad I found that one right away, even before we began pressing. The victim held onto the truth until her dying breath. A truly touching story indeed. The voices of the dead are soft. One must listen carefully to hear their dying wishes. And Miss Crane has spoken. Kay Faraday is the culprit. <laughs> Perhaps the voices you have been hearing are actually the whispers of the devil. Uh, hey, don't make fun of Justine. <laughs> Daldi is not here, is she? <laughs> Wait. Um, let's listen to the voice of reason. Judge Courtney, please take a look at the autopsy report. There is no need. I remember it perfectly. The victim was stabbed in the left breast. Uh, no, it can't be. The letter was found in the victim's left breast pocket. And that's where the victim was stabbed with the candelabra, right, sir? Precisely. It wouldn't have been possible to stab her there without piercing the letter as well. So that begs the question, why was the letter found in the victim's pocket? It's simple. It was placed there after the victim was murdered to throw suspicion onto Kay. Somebody intentionally wanted to create this very situation. In other words, there exists the possibility that the letter was forged by the true culprit. No. The real murderer tried to pin the crime on Kay. That is the only explanation for the letter. And in doing so, the murderer ended up digging their own grave, right, sir? Objection! The culprit is Kay Faraday. The letter was... Yeah, it was actually found in the victim's other pocket. What? Well, what are you saying, pal? The officer's report was wrong when he said the letter was in her left pocket. It's actually in the... Youch! 
A foolish fool who continues to make a fool of himself? Is there no cure for your foolishness? Why do you keep whipping me? And quit calling me a fool. Yarg! I saved you the trouble of punishing him yourself. Uh, indeed. Though I had no intention of punishing him. The letter is stained with blood, no doubt because it was found in the left breast pocket. There couldn't have been an error in the officer's report, unless you were the investigator. <laughs> Say something, Justine. I see you have no objections. Then allow me to continue. There is one more potential suspect in this case. Don't be ridiculous. The killer entered this very room. There wasn't anyone else who did that besides Kay Faraday and the victim. To enter the meeting room, one needs a key card. And their reasoning assumes that the murderer and the victim enter the room together. This is what we overlooked. We just discard that assumption then. This evidence reveals the other suspect besides Kay. Thank God this is coming up early. The key card record. It shows that someone else entered a few hours before. Take that! This is the key card record Judge Courtney handed me earlier. The victim's key card was used at 12.52 a.m. And there was one more person who also used a key card. So you're saying this person was waiting to ambush the victim inside the meeting room? The key card was used at 10.15 p.m. I wouldn't say it's impossible. No, it's impossible. And what makes you say that, pal? You got any proof? Of course I do. I myself am that proof. It was her? I was the one who used that key card after all. Oh! Oh, this just got spicy. Is there something strange about a PIC member entering the PIC meeting room? <laughs> that proves nothing. The fact that you were in here at all makes you a suspect. Or do you perhaps have any evidence that you didn't kill your colleague? Such nonsense! What would I gain by murdering her? Allow me to reiter reiter <clears throat> reiterate what you said earlier. I'm sure it will all become clear upon further investigation. Why would I, a faithful servant of the law, commit a crime? True enough, I entered this room. However, that alone is not reason enough to suspect me of a crime. If that's the case, please tell me why you entered this room. I had some business to take care of, and some preparations had to be made. Preparations? That sounds pretty suspicious, pal. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose what these preparations were. However, I'm sure you could hazard a guess, Prosecutor Edgeworth. So she was preparing for my hearing. She must have gathered all the necessary materials to take away my prosecutor's badge. Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to see young people go head to head so ruthlessly. Who is this? Who is that? Whoa. The hell is he? Oh. Whoa. This guy's got a lot going on. He's some sort of biker, but I recognize his pants and boots. They're the same kind that Jill Crane is wearing. Huh. Yeah, is that a... I think that's the prosecutor's badge on his shoulder. Neat. Wait a second. Wait a second! On his collar and in all those rows on his chest. Those are... Prosecutor, ba prosecutor's badges. Um, I think he... I think those are trophies. 
<laughs> Those are trophies from all the prosecutors he's disbarred. Oh my god. Oh no. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> oh, he must be the fancy chairman. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like he's the head honcho here. Oh man. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That takes me back. When I was young, I'd always butt heads with this brash detective. And then one day, he just disappeared. I hope he's still doing well. Oh, here come the waterworks. Chairman de Boo! <laughs> oh, this is some good shit. <laughs> oh, I'm hyped. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, I got the tinglies. <laughs> oh, wow. Did she just say the best? Hello, Courtney. You sure are full of energy today. And if it isn't little Von Karma, look how much you've grown since I last saw you. Sir, it has been quite a while. A curtsy? You don't have to treat me like some sort of stranger, you know? Remember back in the old days when you'd sit on my lap and call me Unky Boo Boo? <laughs> what? Sniff. Here I go again. Oh, how I cried b b back then. Pops, what are you doing here? Well, a member of the PIC was killed and I heard that you were in charge of the case. What kind of prosecutor is followed around by his own father? Hold your tongue. Do you have any idea who this man is? Chairman of the PIC, former chief prosecutor... He's the right hand of the goddess of law. Now, now, Courtney. I'm just an old chunk of coal. There's no reason to speak so highly of me. Please excuse my subordinate's behavior. I am... Prosecutor Edgeworth, isn't it? Bond with his trusty sidekick, Dick Gumshoe. Oh my god. <laughs> I am Blaze de Best. A blaze of glory, maybe? I'm the proud father of that idiot over there. <laughs> he is an idiot. When that boy was born, me and the missus were happy as can be, you see. But now I, I don't even know where she's gone to. Sob. Pops, you need a handkerchief. Oh, yes. Sebastian is an idiot, but he's such a good boy, you know. Quite the doting father and son. Now then, Courtney, how's the investigation going? Sir. We've established that the culprit is Kay Faraday. We are currently focusing our efforts. There are too many uncertainties in this case. It's impossible to determine that she's the culprit. Surely you haven't forgotten the matter of the letter. I already told you. It was just a simple mistake. The letter was in another pocket. Ouch! You talk too much. Now, now, let's all play nice. Everyone, just calm down. I'm sorry that you had to witness such an unsightly scene, Mr. Chairman. Don't apologize, Courtney. I can follow everyone's logic. Except Sebastian's, that is. Uh, hey, Pops! Okay, uh, okay, as funny as his old man ragging on him is, I, I feel like I, I understand Sebastian's character a bit more. It's... I, I feel like it's not actually a matter of ego. I feel like Sebastian's consumed by trying to live up to his father and impress him. Suddenly, I'm very sad now. Oh, my boy. My poor precious boy. 
Chairman DeBest, I'm a prosecutor. My duty is to bring criminals to justice. However, I won't make someone out to be a criminal without sufficient motive and evidence. Oh, I just realized the final row at the bottom, it's missing one badge. <laughs> He'll really want to take Edgeworth down to get that last badge. Oh no. Hmm, I've heard about you and your relationship with the suspect, you know? Oh, to share such a strong bond. Gay has assisted the police in arresting criminals countless times, pal. There are too many facets of this case that remain unexplored. I see. The bonds of youth are a wonderful thing indeed. Huh? But that is that, and this is this, you know? What's that supposed to mean? What, what the hell did he just burn? Oh, right, Blaze, of course, yeah. The prosecutor's office needs to resolve this case as quickly as possible. I mean, just think of all the other cases that are piling up. There's no time to waste here. It's unfortunate, but you understand, right, Edgeworth? What? Now then, Kay Faraday, I'd like to arrest you now. Okay. No, I won't let you. Kay's innocent, pal. To defy Chairman DeBest is to defy the law. It would be a grave act of disloyalty. In other words, a hearing won't be needed. Are you prepared to lose your prosecutor's badge? That's... Mr. Edgeworth's badge. You can't do that. Using the prosecutor's badge as a shield. What has the PIC come to? Kay, you haven't done anything wrong. Mr. Edgeworth, it was only for a short time, but... Thank you for everything. I'm sorry I turned out to be a criminal. We will make sure to impart your confession to the Goddess of Law. Uh, what should I do? When I was young, I wanted to become a defense attorney like my father. Someone who can fight to save those in need. And right now, this badge is holding me back. A mere badge for the life of a dear friend. I don't even have to consider it. All right. Farewell, Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it! Hold it right there, Judge Courtney. Where is it now, Prosecutor Edgeworth? This is your prosecutor's badge? Prosecutor Edgeworth, what is the meaning of this? Consider this my resignation. I am no longer a prosecutor. Mm. Chef's kiss. M Mr. Edgeworth? W what are you doing? Explain yourself, Miles Edgeworth. You... you can't be serious. Mr. Edgeworth, you... You're joking, right? If you aren't a prosecutor, then I... My only mission is to bring the truth to light. If it's the prosecutor's path to turn a blind eye to the truth, then that title is worth nothing to me. I will walk in the path that I believe in. I will not be stopped here. You, you're running away from Von Karma? From me? No matter what you say, I don't intend to go back on my decision. So, you're leaving me behind again. I'll never, never forgive you for this. Aw. No, this is all my fault. I'm sorry, if only I weren't here. Wait, Kay. 
Detective Gumshoe, don't follow me. B but Mr. Edgeworth, boss. I'm not your boss anymore, Detective. Uh, that's... That's just too much, sir. It's always been you and me. We've always been a team. Detective Gumshoe, you no longer need to follow my lead. You should try to accomplish whatever you can on your end. Oh, oh, this is bad. We just let a dangerous criminal escape. How could I let her get away? And after all my hard work, you see? Rest assured, Mr. Chairman, this area will be locked down immediately. Good. I expect the best from you, Courtney. Please. If there's a single shred of good in Courtney, a single shred, just... Come on! Come on, dude! Yo, back here? Really? So much for locking down the building, the hell? Okay. She's not here either. Where in the world could she have gone? Yo. Knock, knock! I'm here! Mr. Shields. What's going on, Miles? Why the long face? Take it from Uncle Ray. You won't be popular with the ladies looking like that. Why are you here? Did something happen? That's my line. Have you seen the news? About the murder at the PIC headquarters? You're hearing. Wasn't it there today? I found myself wondering if you guys had somehow got caught up in it. Oh wait, it's already made the news. I hear they're searching for a teenage girl suspected of killing an attorney. Can't imagine it could have been her, her, but it has been bothering me. Could you give me the full rundown? The, the truth is... Miles, are you trying to give your Uncle Ray a heart attack? I'm not joking. She really did lose her memory. On top of that, she's a suspect. That makes things even even more difficult. Where would she have run off to? She lost her memory, right? I was hoping she would return here, but... Not likely. She felt responsible for what happened to you, right? Then there's no way she would come back here. I know that, but where else can I look? Calm down, Miles. This isn't like you. It's rare to see you get so heated up. Well, not that it's a bad thing. If you're trying this hard to save an innocent suspect from false charges, I'm sure you'd make a great defense attorney. Actually, just a while ago, I turned in my badge. But that doesn't mean I've decided to become a defense attorney. Besides, Kay isn't just a mere suspect. I may have only known her for a short time, but we've been through quite a lot together. And I know she isn't capable of murder. I'm surprised. Never thought you would go so far to support someone else. I don't know if you even realize it yourself, but... It seems a deep bond has already begun to grow between you and Kay. I'd say it even gives my bond with your father a run for its money. No, it's not that deep. Miles, you just killed your career over this lady. Come on. She just keeps barging into my state of affairs. <laughs> yeah, that girl can be quite a handful. But I'm certain that something has changed inside you since you met her. I'm really jealous, so you know. After all, I lost my old partner. That's why you need to find Kay right now. I don't want you to lose your bond like your Uncle Ray did. Well then, I have a proposal. We have no idea where she is, and searching around blindly won't get us anywhere. 
In that case, why don't we try searching for the cause of her memory loss? Maybe that could give us a lead. I see. That might be a good idea. From what she told me, something must have happened to her at the Grand Tower. Great, that's it. Let's get going then. Hey, at the very least, could you stop looking so grim? If you stay that way, Kay probably won't want to come back at all. Ah, <sighs> good grief. I'm no match for this man. Yo! Oh, this is pretty? Oh, this is really pretty at night. Dang! I like that. It seems it's already dark. Still open on the day of a murder. You gotta admire their capitalist spirit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if Ray didn't say anything, I would have. Yeah, capitalism, ho! But there's no one here. Looks like we've got the place all to ourselves. To prove Kay's innocence, I'll need to investigate her lost memories. Hey, hey, let's go, Miles! We can investigate the roof as much as we want, so let's do what we can. Do what we can, huh? I suppose that's all we can do for now. <laughs> well, we got Granny Yun over here, and Nurse Karen. Um... What was her full name? Karen... Uh, Karen Jensen. Someone said that apparently Karen Jensen is not care injection. Um, I got the p name pun wrong, so... In Jensen. Well, her whole shtick seems to be being very happy to go for the injections of needles, and she's really bad at it, so... Care... Karen Jensen, Karen Jensen, Karen Jensen, Karen Jensen. Uh, I'm not, I really just can't find any other pun in that name. Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's go left to right. It's a statue of a pony, sparkling in the twilight. Hmm, the statue has wings. Perhaps it's a pegasus, the flying horse of myth. Uh, no, there's a horn on its head. Could it be the legendary unicorn? But I thought unicorns didn't have wings. Huh, what's this? There's a plaque at the bottom. The title of this work is written on the plaque. A Magical Contradiction. I suppose the only part of this work I was able to understand was the contradiction part. <laughs> hmm. Why do you think Kay lost her memories? Was there something she wanted to forget? Miles, did you say something horrible to her? Uh, of course not. I would never say anything that cruel to someone. Well, I might have said some unkind things to Detective Gumshoe in the past, but... Uh, I see. Now I feel bad for the big guy. <laughs> the person in the red raincoat who pushed Kay off the tower. She said they came toward her, from the direction of the stand. From that we can deduce... Kay was pushed over the railing on this side. The railing is about as high as my chest. It's unlikely that someone could fall from here accidentally. Hmm, I don't see any particular problems with this railing. Yeah, it looks immaculate. How weird. That's not a push, then, it's a pick up and throw, or heave, rather. This is great on the ground. It's a sakura with branches spread wide. The flowers are nearly in full bloom. According to Kay's testimony, 
Before she was pushed, she was standing under the cherry tree. Uh, Sakura. It's a statue of a creature with the body of a lion and the beak and wings of a bird. These statues seem to be guarding the entrance to this peaceful park. It's an immaculate work, down to the last detail, but since it looks so fearsome, wouldn't it frighten away the visitors to the park? Nah, man, griffins are cool. If you insert a coin, you can use these binoculars to get a nicer view of the city. I'm sure if Kay were feeling better, she'd be happily glued to them. For her sake, I must thoroughly examine every nook and cranny of this viewing platform. This TV seems to be used for showing advertisements for the companies of the Grand Tower. Right now, it's just showing regular television programs, though. Hmm. Oh wait, what am I watching this for? The Steel Samurai doesn't air today. <laughs> He's excited to catch a new episode. The climax with the evil magistrate is heating up, man. Miles Edgeworth, so we meet again! What are you two doing here? Well, we came all this way, so I thought we'd buy some cotton candy. And what about you? You want folks to get the wrong idea about you? Do not worry. I will decide my own actions. You're just a no-good ex-prosecutor. It's no wonder you got the axe. Wait, what? You got fired? You needn't be concerned with what happens to me. Uh, are you sure? Um, oh yeah, what happened to Kay? Huh? Was there some sort of trouble between you two? Anything I can do to help? How about an injection? I it's fine. Are injections her answer to everything? Alright, it's getting cold, isn't it? Let's go home. Well then, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, let's meet again soon. Oh, they left. Huh. Interesting. Well, that leaves the stand open to investigation. You, sir, how about some heavenly cotton candy? Heaven's Tear. Heaven's Tear. Did they name them after the shape of clouds you can see from here? We tear a regular piece of cotton candy in half and then sell it without changing the price. That's why the name is Heaven's Tear. Oh. We tear the costs in half all crying tears of joy. Oh. If the customers knew that, they would be crying tears of sorrow. Huh. Oh, wait, what? Yo! Yo! Was she hiding in Sakura? Ow! Okay. Um, um, don't mind me. I was just admiring the view beneath the tree. Did you just fall out of that tree? I didn't mean to fall. My foot slipped. You're a suspect, and yet you remained at the crime scene. That's not a smart thing to do. Even if you have memory loss, shouldn't you have realized this much? This whole time while you were playing the silly game of hide-and-seek, I've been worried sick about you. Are you angry with me? Of course I am. Answer me. What were you doing here? Did you think I'd let you off the hook that easily just because you have memory loss? Th that's not it! I came here because I thought I could get your badge back. What? If I don't regain my memories, you'll never get it back. I thought if I went back to where I lost my memories, then maybe I would remember. If I could just remember... killing her. <laughs> hmm. 
you're still the same as you were before you lost your memories. Your thoughts and actions have always exceeded my expectations. Without a doubt, you are the Kay Faraday I know so well. However, I cannot approve of your recklessness. I understand. Cut! You get zero style points, Miles. More like negative points. Here's how it's done. Okay, how about a hug? Uh, okay. Oh, oh well then. Mr. Shields. It was just a joke, honest. We interrupt this program with breaking news about the Grand Tower murder case. The police believe the culprit is a teenage girl who was present at the crime scene. She remains at large as the police continue to search for her whereabouts. Oh dear, this is getting pretty serious. Well, gang, what's the plan? We don't have much time. Indeed. It's only a matter of time before they find us here. So then, why don't you take along with us for a while, okay? But I'll just cause trouble for you again. It pains me to say this, but I've got nothing left to lose at this point. Mr. Edgeworth! That settles it. We're all in this together now. Miles, you're in charge of proving Kay's innocence. Failure is not an option. Yes, I understand. Kay, I want you to help Miles with his investigation as much as you can. Yes, I'll do my best. Let's be quick about it, before the cops find us here. Unlike some people, Uncle Ray still has a lot to lose. Sheesh. If I lose the law office, I'll never be able to face Gregory. This man, I'm glad he's on our side. Oh, brother. Oh, I love this case. This is amazing. Yes? Can I help with something? Alright, we need to have a nice, solid chat here. I came back here because I thought I might remember something. Could you again go over what you told me before? Um, well, it was raining, so I stood under the sakura to make to take shelter. And then, a red... A person in a red raincoat appeared. That person pushed me, and I fell. Can you tell me anything about the person in the raincoat? I'm sorry. I don't remember that much. No, wait. As the person approached me, I saw the moon just over their shoulder. The moon. Yes, that's right, it's just a faint memory, but... I think the moon was in the exact same spot as it is now. Huh? It was floating just above the Sakura. She could see the moon behind the figure in the raincoat. That doesn't make sense. This is a new piece of testimony. I'll be sure to keep it in mind. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, for a while now, I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. What? Is that true? Well then, please speak freely. Say whatever comes to your mind. Um, okay. I remember a faint scent. It was a wonderful smell coming from the counter of the food stall. I followed the fragrance only to find a perfectly sculpted burger resting on two golden buns. The tender and juicy patty made my taste buds sing with joy. Yes, I can remember what I thought at that moment. I want seconds. I, I don't think this memory has anything to do with the case. Why would they sell a golden burger at a cotton candy shop? The hell? You called yourself the great thief Yadagarasu. 
You prided yourself on being a noble thief who steals the truth. Do you remember anything about that? Well... Um... Oh, huh. Maybe I was called a noble thief because I won the Nobel Prize. It's Nobel, with a E-L. That's Nobel, not noble. And they don't give prizes for thievery. I actually want to present some stuff. Do you have any thoughts about the victim's letter? This letter? It's a promise I made, right? If you can call conspiring to commit a crime a promise, then yes. A crime? But I was the one who wrote this letter, right? This letter is not handwritten. We cannot be certain that you wrote it. Is that so? Okay, that settles that. The letters aren't handwritten. Interesting. I'm terribly sorry. Even if you give me that, I still don't remember anything about you. No, I wasn't planning on giving it to you. And we don't... We don't have the prosecutor's badge, do we? Okay. Now yeah, we saw that, but I can't skip ahead for some reason. Because it's a different play session. What job? <laughs> Without the prosecutor's badge, I just feel so naked. <laughs> okay, let's see what Raymond has to say. Then we'll do some logic. I can't believe this incident is already on the news. I wonder how they caught wind of it. Maybe they're doing a live report from that helicopter over there. Uncle Ray is going to be on TV. Miles, make sure you tune in. Well, what is he thinking at a time like this? Okay. Logic time. Well, there's a contradiction here. Not exactly connection, but... Oh, yeah, okay. I can't see a clear connection between these two pieces of information. I need to think this over one more time. Well, she was standing near the railing. What? Okay. We tried this and this, and this and this, meaning these two are the only ones left, but, um... Oh, okay. If I recall Kay's testimony, a person in a raincoat approached her from behind the candy stand. Then this person supposedly pushed Kay over the railing opposing the stand. Moreover, Kay said she saw the moon over the person's shoulder. However, earlier I confirmed that the moon is floating in the opposite direction. And on the night Kay lost her memories, it seems the moon was in the exact same spot. Therefore, the positions of the moon and the person in the raincoat don't match up. Her memories have probably become confused. After all, had she actually been pushed over the railing, she couldn't have survived the fall. Perhaps I should question Kay's memory of where she fell. Well, if she was standing under the cherry tree, and she fell, it shouldn't have been over the ledge. Kay was not pushed over the railing on this side. After all, if you fell from here, you wouldn't be even be alive in the first place. But I'm certain I was standing under the cherry tree, the, the Sakura. If I fell, then the only place I could have fallen was over the railing. 
Well, maybe the ground just opened up from under you and swallowed you up. The ground here can open up? How? No, no, it was just a joke, okay? Please don't take it so seriously. I will. No, strange as it may sound, that may actually be the truth. Even if it's only a small chance, it matters not. Let's try searching the area around the tree. Son of a... Kay could not have fallen over the railing. There must be something around here that proves it. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. This is... It looks like a maintenance hatch. Okay, maybe it fell down here. Nah, just kidding. There's no way something like that could happen. I'm sorry. I just can't remember if... No, that was just a joke. No need to take it seriously. Right, so when should I take you seriously then? When... Oh, when indeed. Well, if you jumped into Uncle Ray's arms... Mr. Shields. Eh, <laughs> come on, Miles. It was just a joke. A joke, you know? Oh, I get it. No one ever takes you seriously. Ouch. Uh, that stun a bit. Hmm. Flower petals are scattered all over the ground. The blossoms are not yet in full bloom, so the strong winds up here must be the culprit. Personally, I'd appreciate it if they spent a little more effort cleaning these petals up. <laughs> Wait, so are we out of logic? Oh. Any more thoughts, Kay? Oh. Anything on the news? Whoa. We are seeing live footage from the 50th floor. The investigation will continue throughout the night. Hmm. The 50th floor is in the meeting room of the PIC headquarters. That's right, we can see the shadows of the investigators behind those blinds. Uh-oh. Looks like making a clean getaway just got that much harder. It seems we have no choice but to cleverly evade the eyes of the media. Maybe Uncle Ray should have become a spy instead of an attorney. If worse comes to worst, I may have to use Mr. Shields as a decoy. Miles, just now you were thinking of something terrible, weren't you? I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. There's a Sakura. Oh! I can deduce? Huh. This appears to be a live news broadcast. In other words, what we see on the screen is how the Grand Tower looks at this very moment. Does that mean we can be seen on the TV too? No, the camera is too far away and it's too dark to see us clearly. There is no need to worry. It certainly would be bad if Kay were to be seen on TV right now. This appears to be a live news broadcast. Oh. How about the lights? We're seeing live footage from the 50th floor. The investigation will continue through the night. The 50th floor? Isn't that the meeting room of the PIC headquarters? That's right. We can see the shadows of the investigators behind those blinds. It looks like they are still investigating the meeting room. Oh. As the reporter said, you can see the investigators' shadows moving around. Huh? Uh, there is... a huge contradic contradiction in this image. I should present that piece of evidence. Huh? Hold on. That... The 49th floor is lit up. 
That's odd. The contradiction is found here. Do you know how many floors this building has? Of course. 50 floors, right? Just above this, the place where the PIC conducts their practically illegal cover-ups. <laughs> oh, burn! Couples are wishing for love. Kinda ironic, don't you think? So what's this dark area above the 50th floor? Maybe it's the Tunnel of Love. Those are always dark, eh? The viewing platform we're on now should be directly above the PIC meeting room. However, the late night investigation is taking place two floors below us. This is a clear contradiction. Was there a mistake in the pamphlet? No, no. Rather, it's more natural to assume this building has a hidden 51st floor. And that's where Kay would have fallen down into. I see. So that's where the Tunnel of Love is. Uh-oh, she's so pure and gullible. It's breaking Uncle Ray's heart. Then why don't you take this opportunity to be more serious for once? You just don't get it, Miles. I joke around to make things easier for you. On the contrary, his painful jokes only make things harder for me. Hmm. Well, I think... We'll put together that obvious logic next time, and then we'll see what happens from there. I do wonder... What the hell the next uh, back-and-forth rebuttal is going to be like. After all, if Justine Courtney sees us, she's not gonna bother waiting for Miles to speak anything. If Miles and even Raymond are found here... No, the, the gavel of justice is going to swing down hard. Hmm. So this... This is the fourth case, and we have some serious bullshit going on, man. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a goddamn second. It suddenly occurs to me that this man was wearing a bright, vivid, red coat. Okay, I don't know why. I don't know how. But until further notice, Blaze is suspect un um, n numero uno. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. God, great character stuff today. Complete recontextualization of Sebastian. Um, and Miles just throwing down the gauntlet and proving just what sort of person he is. Casting aside his, his career, everything he's worked for in his entire life. All in the name of defending Kay. Oh. Some real good shit went down this time, and boy, for how serious this all feels, for how huge this all feels, this is still only case four. I think we have a fifth one ahead of us in the future. Like, where do you go from here? I mean, I assume taking down whatever shadowy people are behind the attempted assassination of, um... Of Gen Fa and all that, and uh, the smuggling ring. It, it just. Mm. Man, I am enraptured. This is so good. But I think I've run out of things to say that aren't just mindless praise, so. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.